In the previous video we added templates to our website and now we will create the home page. Now this is where our Death Star Daily website will finally start to get its identity. Of course we can use the CMS to create all sorts of websites basically all you need to do is change the front end's looks. First let's spice up our site with some CSS. In our main layout I'll just wrap the text in our number one heading in an anchor tag linking to the home page. And then I'll open up style.css and add a selector for that anchor. Now let's see. First of all, we'll set the display to inline block. And then we'll need to add a background. Um, let's take a background image of one of my Darth Vader dolls, like so. And then we'll set the height to 70 pixels. And we'll set the padding to 20, 0, 0, 90 pixels. So that we'll have a top padding of 20 and a left padding of 90. And then we'll just set the color to black. Now we need a hover style for that as well. And let's set the text decoration to none and the color to black. And while we're at it, let's select the top three headings and set the font family to Georgia Serif. So that it will get that newspapery look. Also, we'll go to the config CMS file and set our site name to something more appropriate. Now let's see how that looks. Ah, that's much better already. Now, we've made it so that we have access to page data everywhere, remember? And that's cool because now we have access to the value for template 2. Now let's open up our page controller and pan our code. First, we'll need to fetch the data for the page we are visiting. And then, we'll need to set a subview and load the layout, much like we did in the admin section. Now, we'll need different data for every template, won't we? So, we'll set up methods for that. Let's first create a private method called underscore page. This will fetch any additional page data. For now, we'll just have a dump welcome from the page template. Now, let's duplicate this method and create similar methods for home page and news archive. And in the index method, we'll define a method variable and set it to the current page template, preceded by an underscore. And then we'll call that method. So, if we have a template called home page, we'll call method underscore home page. And if we have a template page, that's right, we'll call underscore page. So, let's check to see if that works. Well, that looks like it's working. But what if in the future we create a template and forget to add a private method for that? Now that could get us into big trouble. So I would like to handle that in some way. Let's check to see if the method exists. We'll use PHP's method exists function for that. We'll pass the class as the first parameter and the method name as the second. Now, if the method exists, we'll call it. If it doesn't, we'll log exactly what went wrong and then we'll throw a pretty generic error to the page for the user to see. Okay, let's go fetch the data for the home page now. Now I would like to show six news articles like you see on the screen here. So we'll show the first one in a container with a span 9 class. The second and third will be in a span 5 and a span 4 class. And number 4 through 6 will be in a span 3 class. So let's go to the home page method and fetch those articles. First, we'll load the article model. And then we'll use action record limit to limit the result of the next query to six articles. And then we'll create a variable called this data articles. And then we'll just set it to using the get method from the article model. And that should give us six articles to work with. Now, in the index method, Let's set a subview. It will be equal to our template. We'll implement this subview much like we did in our admin layout. So, it's back to the main layout for the front end. Let's cut this bit here and instead load a new view file. It will live inside of the templates folder and be equal to the subview that we just set. Now, let's create a new view folder called templates. And inside of that folder, create three view files. Homepage.php page.php and news underscore archive.php. Now we'll work with homepage.php first. Here we'll paste in the HTML that's still in our clipboard. And now inside of our main content area we'll create a div with a class of span 9, a div with a class of span 5 and a div with a class of span 4. 
Inside of the sidebar, we'll just create an unordered list with a single list item. Now, let's go into our CMS helper and set up a helper function to return an excerpt for an article. We'll call it get underscore excerpt. It will take the article as the first parameter and the number of words we wish in the excerpt as the second. Let's just set that to 50 for now. Inside, let's start by setting up an empty string and return it. Then, we'll set a variable which will hold the URL to the full article. Now that will be article followed by a slash, followed by the article ID, followed by another slash and followed by the article slug. Next, we'll set the heading. That will be a number two heading. Now inside, we'll create an anchor to the URL we just created. The title will be the text. Now, before we go any further, let's first go back to our homepage view and call that function for the first article. We'll just do get excerpt article zero. Now let's check to see if we're getting anything. Yep, that looks fine to me. Let's continue with our get excerpt function. Now, the second thing to add to our string is a paragraph tag. And inside, we'll add the article body. But first, we'll strip any HTML tags that we might have. And next, we'll run it through our escape function. Now, all we need to do is find a way to cut the text off at a certain number of words. To do so, let's create another helper function. We'll call it limit to num words. It will take two parameters. The first one will be string and the second will be the number of words. Now first we'll set an excerpt variable and that will be an array that is created by running the string through explode. It will explode the string by spaces, meaning that every word will be a key in the array. Now the PHP explode function takes a third parameter as well and this is where you can set the limit and we'll set it to num words plus one. And now we'll do a conditional. If the number of items in the excerpt array is greater or equal to the number of words, then we'll just pop that from the array and that will give us an array limited to the maximum number of words. And then we'll implode the excerpt array and we'll use a space to do so. So we'll sort of glue all these words together with spaces in between. And then we'll just run excerpt. Now let's just see what that gets us. Well, what it gets us is a big fat error and that's because we have a missing argument. Now what we're looking for here is the second argument in limit to num words and that should be equal to num words. Now let's see what that gets us. Well, that looks like it's been cut off. Let's check. If we change the number of words, we should see a difference. Yep, that's five words, all right. Now let's set the number of words back to 50. The final thing to do is add a read more link. Now we'll just add another paragraph tag and it will contain the same anchor as in the number two heading. Only the anchor text will be read more and the title will contain the article title. Now, one final check. Yep, looking fine and dandy there. So let's create excerpts number two and three as well. Here's number two and here's number three. Let's just add one conditional here. The article needs to be set before we can get the excerpt. That's conditional for number one and number two as well. Now it's just one more final check in the browser here. Well, we're almost there, but I think we need to wrap the first article into a div with a class of row. And let's do the same for the other articles as well. And now let's check to see if we should adjust the number of words for every article. Well, 50 is okay for the first and second one. Let's set the third one to 30 though. Also, I would like to add a pub date, so let's add that to the excerpt function right underneath the heading. A p tag with a class of pub date. And we'll wrap it around the article pub date, which will run through our escape function. Now let's also add some styling for that pub date. Let's set font style to italic and font size to 0.9m. Check that. Yep, all good. Now, the last thing to do is create a list of article titles to display in the sidebar. Now, we will be reusing that list in other views as well. So, again, we'll create a helper function for that. We'll call it article links. 
it will take an array of articles and let's look through the article array and do the following. First, we'll set the URL like we did before, but instead of just copying that code, let's give that its very own function. We'll call it article underscore link and it will take the article as a parameter. And then it will return the link. So we need to set it here and we need to set it there. Now we want to return an unordered list, so we'll start by opening up a UL tag and at the end we'll close it. Now let's go back to our view file and slice our articles array. We need to set the offset to 3, so the first 3 articles are removed and then we'll just call the article links function and pass in the articles array. Now let's check in the browser. Yeah, that already looks good, but it could do with just a little bit of styling. So in the homepage view, into the sidebar, I'll just add a class of sidebar. And then in styles.css, I'll just target the anchor tag for h2 and the anchor tag for h3. And I'll set the color to black. And then I'll add a sidebar h3 selector. And I'll set the font size to 1m and the line height to 1.2m and the margin bottom to zero. And then I'll set the sidebar UL to a margin left of zero and to a list style type of none. Now let's just do one more final check. Yeah, that looks pretty dandy to me. That wraps it up for our homepage template. Next in line is the news archive template. Stay tuned.